Welcome to Smartacular. It's me, Jez, and I'm here with Mastovo. And this is our second podcast. I mean, how did we make it through that first one alive? That was, there were moments, Mass Hobo. I was, I was fearful for us. We did all right, I think. I think we did okay. I, I, I was mostly fearful for our cholesterol levels after we talked about some of that food that we consume. So, yeah, but not just, all the time. But not all the time. No, no. It, it's only it's just a once in a while thing. But it, it yeah. did make me think about the holidays because we kind of tipped Which, on that and we're getting yeah, they're close. fastly approaching. Why do they always, why, it feels like it's always time for the holidays to start now. Now that I'm older, I feel like I barely get a couple months in and, oh my God, it's already time to start planning the holidays. So weird. Yeah. Time is weird. Time is weird when you're older. But the, and I guess all the time, time's probably always weird. But I've been thinking about it because, you know, last year we didn't have a very big holiday because of COVID and everything. So... I'm just wondering, like, does that mean we have to punch it up and really go for it this holiday? Because who knows if we get one next year? I don't know what to do with that. I'm not sure. Yeah, I my holidays, like I said, I have a fairly small family, so my holidays really weren't that different because I don't mm-hmm. have to do much traveling anymore. I don't mm-hmm. have to jump all over. I don't have to go to two different families. Bonus yeah. of still being not married again after getting a divorce is I go back to only having to visit one family, so... Not that I didn't like a lot of her family. I, I'm still mm-hmm. great friends with her brother and her mom. I still call her mom when I talk to her. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, you can have like an amicable thing, but it's it's not even so much that you don't get along with them. It's just like it's a lot of work to go to two different yeah, houses it is. and split it up. And, and you're always exhausted by the end of the day because I always feel obligated to absolutely eat two complete holiday meals. Yeah, um, you have to. <laughs> You have to, and it's like I'm not even recuperated from that first holiday meal that and happened. And then you got to go into the second one this morning. Yeah, yeah. I've had three hours off. I'm still completely eat, full eat from time. eleven to two, and then hang out for like an hour, hour and a half, then drive like maybe thirty, forty five minutes, maybe an hour, <laughs> get there just in time for them to finish prepping for dinner, mm-hmm. so they can eat the next meal. Yeah, and I'm gonna eat the hors d'oeuvres that are sitting out, the yeah. snacky stuff. Yeah, the oh even the deviled I'm eggs. Full, that's a personal favorite of mine. Deviled eggs. I love the deviled eggs and oh like olives. God. I like black olives. I I still put them on all of my fingers like a weirdo. So you look like the creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you don't. Do I that. like green olives too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I I will pretty much accept any olive in any form. Yeah, they're good. But I do. I like that. Like and the weird dips that people make. Oh um, yeah. The block of cream cheese. Do you guys do this when it's a block? All of cream kinds cheese? of whatever is in it, and then you just eat it with crackers and, and then you, whatever else. What we do is we get cocktail sauce, and you put like fresh little pink shrimp in it in the cocktail oh. sauce, and you pour that. that over the loaf of cream cheese, and then you dip wheat thins in it. See, I've always had like some sort of. Actually, the one I I actually came to like was cream cheese, and then someone did the jalapeno jelly over it. Hmm. Yeah, that would. And work. then wheat thins. Yeah, I don't know. Why is it always wheat th- or a wheat thin type cracker? I don't. They have to be. I don't want to use enough. a brand name. I don't want to. They have to be. T- yeah, a, a wheat type of cracker. Let they me have guess. To they be <laughs> strong enough to dip into that block of cream yeah. cheese. They have to be strong enough and have no flavor of their own. Yeah, they're they yeah. They have to be they completely to just, neutral. They're just a delivery yeah, system. They're just is. a delivery a system. Yeah, it's a conveyor. It's an edible plate, is what block. it is. It is, it is, and it it's got fiber in it, so you can tell yourself that. Yeah, it's you can kind say this is I, this is better than like those Captain's wafers crackers that are all just butter and flour and whatever yeah. stuff, and I'm nothing good in them. Yeah, these have some some very serviceable wheat in them. These have roughage. <laughs> the, definitely, you will feel that roughage, and I I the counteract love this three pounds of cheat cream cheese you just ate. The the cream cheese with. Anything really actually it's, tastes pretty good. Um, my ex it takes a lot to fuck to up make... cream cheese. I mean, literally, cheesecake is just cream cheese with more stuff in it and heated up and then cooled yeah. down. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty fabulous. It's my, just cream my cheese and sugar, the two a, big components. He'd make a, a it was a block of cream cheese, a block of like a chunk of Velveeta, and then a can of chili, and you put it in a crock. Oh, pot. yeah. Oh, that's so And then so you good. just that, that has Fritos. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Not Fritos. I did not say that word. Corn chips. Corn chips. 
Yeah. Corn, the, the, the kind of scoopable corn chip. Corn that chips. You could go yeah, those there. are good. And then you, then you can make, well, I don't know what you'd call it without the brand name. Cause growing up, we always used to have some, well, it wasn't with cream cheese, but it was just essentially corn chips and chili and mm-hmm. cheese. Mm-hmm. And we called it, we yeah. have to use the brand name cause it's, we call it Frito pies. What we called it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So, so when you talk about the holidays, I mean, Podcast number one and podcast number two, of course, have been a little food oriented because you cannot have holiday discussions without blocks of cream cheese involved. It just is impossible because the other option is to talk about how much money it costs to get through the holiday and how people like charge up their cards to the max and everything. Yeah, it's just one right after the other. You got Halloween, so you got to spend money on costumes or decoration. You don't have to, Mm -hmm. but... If you want to, you do. You get a, you maybe get a pumpkin, carve that bad boy up, put it out front. Mm-hmm. Then you got to buy candy for kids, and you don't want to be the house that gives out shitty candy because if you're that house, oh. then you know That's nobody co- nobody ever really forever. visits my house in the neighborhood anyway because they go to the, there's mm-hmm. a lot of rich neighborhoods located near me, not too far yeah. driving distance, and they go to those because some of them folks you give look out like full a, size you, bars. I, I, yeah, I'm sure it, what it honestly is is what you're trying to say is you look like a shitty candy house. You know, I probably like, am. You're Actually, like, I usually just it. turn my light off. I may, I saw, like last year, I don't even think I was here. <laughs> and the year before yeah. that, I turned my light off because I was like, and well, one year I did do it when I was here and I had like t- two people show up the whole night. I didn't yeah. buy much candy because I was like, I've never had anybody r- knock on my door, ring my doorbell. I don't want to be but, stuck with a leftover candy. I do not need that in my life. So I buy yeah. kind of shitty candy that I'm not attracted to. Just in case someone shows up, but we we typically don't get a lot of. I don't I don't know if it's if the actual house to house trick or treating is still a really big thing. I think they've been trying to downplay that whole idea that maybe we always tell kids there's stranger danger and to stay away, don't accept candy from strangers. Then we make them go out. On and then one night a year, we're like, yo, go hit hit everybody's fucking houses and take all the candy yeah, they got. You don't know any of these people, but go get all the candy from all the strangers. So which I, don't know. I think that's different now. I mean. When I was a kid, it was like I knew everybody's house I was going to, and it's like you'd go up and they'd be like, "Oh, hey, what's going on?" You know, it's different now. Yeah. But I think I think when people do get into the Halloween thing, I think it's I have never once ever since I was a child and they told me inspect all of your candy for insert random ass objects and drugs. Look, one drug dealers aren't going to give away good shit for free to kids and candy. That's just bad business. They're not going to yeah. do it. They're in the business to make money. They're not in the business to get people give out their product for free Two, somebody might be crazy but it's going to be rare that somebody takes the time to individually rewrap all their candy to make Mm -hmm. it look professional to get some people i mean it's i don't even think i've ever heard of an actual instance of candy being tampered with and maybe that's because somebody was diligent and they threw it away but i I remember my mom always going through the i don't think my dad ever did yeah. But he worked with candy his entire, most of his adult life that I can remember because he worked at the same place I did. When, yeah, I feel like it's a, a kind of a old wives' tale and maybe just a little bit of a mythical, you know, yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of folklore to that. I don't know. You know, there's yeah. always the razor blades and the apples. By oh, yeah, the, the way, razor. I'm not I, giving any suggestions to if anybody somebody, that they should If somebody hands a kid an shit. apple, nine times out of ten, it's going to get thrown back at the house anyway or right in the fucking garbage. Yeah, what kid wants to eat an apple? On thanks, uh, you know, on not on Thanksgiving, but on Halloween. Yeah. Who wants, if somebody gives you an apple, you're gonna definitely you get labeled as that, that house, house, and you don't. No, no, don't give out apples. Don't give out anything healthy unless the apple is covered out- in candy. Unless you cover it in candy or caramel. Caramel. Yeah. And then it's okay. Yeah, and and I say it caramel. I know some people say caramel. I think that's not the I've same. I've always said thing. caramel. So uh, I caramel. I mean, I'm like, let's cut out as many as many uh look we didn't take we on can. aluminium Carmel. either so yeah we didn't take on alumini- al- aluminium my, yeah. my husband does that one yeah we've uh we've done the smart compact way to say things and i appreciate that so yeah but don't give out a crappy apple uh save that for the nutrition talk a week after halloween when that kid's been zipped up on sugar for a week then you can have that talk about we're gonna take the candy away now and and that's what's so interesting about all these holidays is you get some big commercial uh, thing that goes with it. Like with Mother's Day, you get flowers and chocolate. Halloween is all candy. And you, you do see that we've been suckered into a lot of scams. You know, it's like um, I found out 
over in England when I was there a couple of years ago, or it was about five years ago now, I guess, they have Coca-Cola at Christmas time. Coca-Cola truck goes around to all the little towns, this old fashioned looking Coca-Cola truck, and Santa Claus gets out of the van and hands out free Coca-Cola to everybody. And That's I was kind of like, bitching. I'm like, what is happening right now? Because I was like, why is Santa driving a Coca-Cola truck? And he's like, oh, no, the big red truck, that's a thing. You know, he was like, oh, no, that's a thing. Santa comes every year and, and distributes the Coca-Cola. And I'm like, what the <laughs> Coca-Cola fuck is Santa. That? And, and he's like, that's really how Santa is in England. That's how he originates his or, origin story. The marketing scheme with Coca-Cola. Marketing, yes, it's absolutely a marketing They need to change that because I'd rather have a polar bear deliver me Coca-Colas. <laughs> a live one, right? Yeah, yeah, it has to be uh, a real polar bear. Now, I think they did have some of the cute polar bear stuffies, you know, stuffed yeah. animals, and they were on the cans. There were little cans of Coke. But I'm telling you the amount of people that lined they up They go ape shit. This, they did, and it was a free, it was like a chintzy little freaking It's one of those little uh, six-ounce cans, those little... Yeah, I, but everybody, and people were like bringing their children, and they go get a picture with Santa in front of the red truck, and I'm like, what the actual fuck is happening right now? Because it was just not any kind of yeah. experience I'd ever had. I've never... And he was like, he was like, he couldn't believe that I'd never heard of it. Yeah. And I was like, I can't believe it's happening. What is this? <laughs> Was weird. I've never heard of that. I didn't know that was. I didn't know the truck was a thing. I mean, yeah. I guess that makes sense because I doubt anybody's going to let him do it another way. So, yeah, yeah, you've got to have a legit Santa experience in a tr- in a Coke truck. Yeah. yeah, it was it was weird. But you know, that's that's a commercial. I mean, obviously, Coca Cola is sponsoring that, and oh, yeah. it's a big thing there. So that's what it's like. We tie all the Christmas candy, and and. You know, there's so much marketing that goes like, I think in our town, Costco puts the Christmas stuff into the store on Casco. I always say it like that, Casco. The Costco stuff goes in like in September. Yeah, they start putting that stuff in so early. Yeah, they used to be decent, kind of wait till after Halloween, but no. No, they they, Halloween gets jumped over now. Like Halloween's a second class citizen. Yeah, which I find Halloween is a holiday. I enjoy Christmas for for what it technically for not technically but what it usually traditionally stands for like family mm-hmm. and stuff like that. I and you know that's what I like Christmas for and helping you remember that that's what it should be about anyway. Like no matter what day of the year mm-hmm. it is, it should be about that. Mm-hmm. I like Halloween because it's a fantasy holiday and not fantasy in the sense of like oh it's fake. Fantasy in the sense that like you get to like do something you can't do any other day of the week. Like, you Mm -hmm. can technically do Christmas anytime you want. You can go see your family and make a meal and sit down and just hang out together. And you can find somewhere to put on a damn Christmas movie if that's what you want to do. But what I'm saying Mm -hmm. is, like, that's something you can do anytime. But I can't dress up as a random whatever and walk down the street. I mean, Mm -hmm. I guess you can. It is America. But Mm -hmm. people will be like, what the shit? And you'll probably have the cops calling on you. But if you do it on Halloween and you're the person that's not dressed up weird, they're like, "What what the fuck's wrong with you? Yeah, so that's it, why Halloween it definitely, is cool. It gives you a, a hall pass for the day to dress up like Michael from the Halloween movies and get away with yeah, it. Yeah, and do whatever, man. It's Yeah, it's you can a, walk into a bank like that that one day and people will be like, yeah. "Oh, somebody's dressed up." Um I I you know, it it's also for women. It's that one day a year you can be a slutty nurse. You can a be slutty, slutty anything. Proctologist, you can. It can be a absolutely uh and I, I remember I worked in a building, I won't say where, um, with a lot of different people. It was it had hundreds of people in there. But on Halloween, some of the most Everybody was slutty. women that you would never think. Everybody was a slutty something. Yeah. One gal walked in a slutty storm from the Marvel comics, and I didn't even recognize her. I was like, oh. And then it was like the mousy girl. I'm like, damn. Okay. Did not see that one coming. It was just like, it really for women is apparently a very empowered day where you can show off your titties and your ass and whatever you want. And it, it you can be sexy little red riding hood. You can be whatever. And women go gaga over it. And it makes me think, why are we so repressed that we have to pack that all in to one day? It's kind of sad. It's like I mean, I don't. I guess because being slutty storm 
and you work in like an office environment and nobody else is dressed up as slutty storm that like throws off the business vibe yeah, i get it i think yeah yeah i, I mean think... maybe just maybe take that and like if you want to like hang out at your house and dress up as slutty storm that's fine i don't care but i, I guess you know if <laughs> nobody like... else is doing it at work like it's one of those things like if nobody else is doing it at work yeah it's not the fa- but... i guess it's just because the rule it's just work rules like i can't have i can't even like cut my hair how i want for work if i wanted to do it something different it has to be this certain way and i'm like come on dog like you're just paying yeah. me to work you're not paying me to fucking be i don't fashion. even i don't care yeah i don't just let me do what i want why well, won't you let your employees i think it's be just I, and i think it's interesting that the companies don't have a particular dress code on that day like because some of the outfits are pretty skimpy they're pretty yeah i'm like Okay, and and I don't actually the thing to me about it is I'm not offended. I think it's fine. I think it's great to to wear whatever you want and be whatever you want for that. But it's so ex- the some of the people's choices. It's like they didn't go one or two notches beyond their normal persona. Yeah, yeah. They went ten. You know, they went twenty, and it's like uh, that is speaking volumes to me about someone who isn't it has to have permission and be allowed you know to to go to that level and, which i totally understand but yeah and maybe it's not that they are maybe it's not they're looking for permission they're maybe they f- are not confident enough to do that all year round because they're worried about mm-hmm. what people would say or, or maybe yeah. even themselves like looking at themselves they'll be like well, well but now i can do it and it's not going to be a big like whoa holy shit it's like oh they're just dressed up as so-and-so but I think maybe you're... It might be a combo of both. Who knows, you know? Yeah, and I think maybe it's that you are like, this isn't me. I'm being Storm. You know, like, yeah, you can just use me. that. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's a it's way not, to... This is not Jenny from Human Resources. I'm Storm exactly. with my titties hanging out. <laughs> I'm slutty Storm. I mean, yeah, yeah I, I, it's just, it's a very interesting... Uh, and especially you'll see you'll i always notice that it's not necessarily the younger girls that do this it's it's older women it's like women yeah. my age they just go fucking nuts and it's like okay go for it i think it's okay like i don't have a problem with it it's yeah. just always such a surprise on that day where you see the women who are like this is my day it's halloween my boobies are coming out yeah it's pretty much that and they're singing that song all day long and they're just shaking it it's like that's a lot of boobs, and I think it's the best day of the year, probably for male um, people in the office. They're probably like, "Yay!" and they're sitting there dressed up like Homer Simpson, you know, and they're just <laughs> whatever. They're not as into it. Like they don't come in as slutty gladiator. They're no. not. No. I mean, they gladiator was like already slutty, but like ninety percent of the men in an office environment are not no. going to be able to pull off gladiator. They're not going to be able to pull off. Uh, Leonidas from 300. They're not going to, you know, you have your exceptions, I'm sure. The way my office is set up is I'm not in a big office. I'm in my own office in a small Uh building, and every one of us has our own office. So there's not really like a area everybody would congregate in anyway, even if there was that. And like the way it's set Uh up is ever, even different places have different office building, not really office buildings, but different buildings where their offices are Uh because it's a campus. And so there's just... yeah. You know, I have my set yeah. of offices. Another building has a bunch of other people in there. And the building next to us has a bunch of people in there. And then all the other buildings have their offices and classrooms and stuff. So, yeah, it's not the same. It has I haven't ever really worked in a. T- I work in an office environment, but I've never worked in an office building with that has like yeah. cubicles and, you know. Yeah. Lots and I don't know if that's just because of the, the profession and- I'm in. I don't, I, you know, and I took the positions I took. The closest thing, my first job here. Would have been the closest to an office environment, but even even then, it was still broken up like it is. Mm-hmm. Kind of my current job. Yeah, you have to have the optimal setup to really be able to show off your storm out. Yeah, I've never or been your... in a place like the office where everybody's in one floor together, and you all have like a common break room, and you yeah. all have, you know, kind of. I guess you could say that was kind of how it was at my first job. We had a few departments in that building, and there was like a coffee pot by a sink, and that was it. There was no like. Wow. separate break room that had like snack machines or anything it was a coffee That's pot very and a upper sink crust and that mm-hmm. was and that was it yeah <laughs> a coffee pot and a sink well that's all i need yeah <laughs> and the thing is i don't even drink coffee so i was never oh. at the coffee pot so 
Yeah, I was always at the coffee pot. They thought that I actually had a job somehow making the coffee. Yeah. No, I work out on the floor. I'm just back here by the coffee pot. It makes me feel good. It just makes me feel yeah. safe. I'm in, my, I'm in my happy place here. Well, and that's like, so the next holiday, like, okay, so Halloween, you get to dress up, you get to eat candy. There's a lot of costume parties, you know, social. And then you go into what I think is really the most boring holiday, which is Thanksgiving, it, which is literally about eating. I feel like that one that's, is I mean, all yeah, that's that's eating. all it is. I know there's a story there of our origins as a country and and you know but then we start finding out more and more of the truth about how things really went down and it's not as cute of a of a no story it's not about and then, the, you know and i think that so and I, but i also think i don't think that's how all of it went all the time and i think that's kind of what thanksgiving is about it's not about like oh we found out these pilgrims did these terrible things yeah but mm-hmm. let's look at humanity as a whole across things i mean if you want to really there's the worst thing we did was bring diseases they didn't know about that was literally probably the worst thing we could have done because if you want to look at all the other nations around before we Mm -hmm. got here i mean they were catching each other taking each other hostage in the middle of the night killing each other i mean there's evidence of primitive man killing their own children and eating their brains so like Mm -hmm. We really, yeah, it's it, not, there's it's no not one, always... there's no one group of people that have been like the no. awesome people throughout history. Maybe like no. Buddhists, that's no, maybe, think, think maybe the... Buddhists are the only ones, you know, that, that <laughs> might get a pass. I think, and I, I don't think that, um, it's surprising that real yeah. history is not as pleasant as we want it to be. Yeah. And so I, that's the whole thing is the story is authentic and there's a real story that's always been out there it's that we come in and commercialize it to make it and then people it, get it jaded and then they find it. all the bad yeah. shit and then yeah and, and, nobody and then that's like, all they focus on yeah before they commercialized and you know did all the marketing and made this a way to make money people a lot of people did know the real story you know if you look at history if anybody's picked up a history book just like what you described nothing happened here that wasn't barbaric and horrible and happening everywhere else it wasn't like this was a isolated incident it's just it's hard you know celebrating your independence and and the mayflower and coming over here there of course you know yay we're here and this is how our country expansion is not a clean business yeah and and that's exactly it and it's like so do we really want to celebrate that or do we just kind of focus on again it's a time to get together with your family and be i think it's more one of those times to celebrate the human spirit yeah like like we we these people sat on a shitty dirty it's a pioneer boat for like three months or how three or four months i forget how long the actual trip was in a boat that has like no engine you can't you're you're you have to know how to sail to get here a mm-hmm. bunch of people died on the way over from starvation, disease, whatever, mm-hmm. going crazy on a ship because that's your home for three fucking months. You know, not a 15-day yeah. cruise. It's three months of the probably worst living you've ever imagined in your life. Like, there's no yeah. toilet on board. Nobody's showering. Uh, it's to, it's if to you get even the tiniest injury, you probably die or get some sort of wicked infection. Like, mm-hmm. they braved that to try to find somewhere to call their own that wasn't they just were yeah. going somewhere they didn't know. Nobody had a way to. You couldn't text the other country and be like, "Hey, dog, do y'all have any inhabitants?" And they'd be like, "No, hey, we're dog. full up. We don't want any new people." And they'd be like, "Well, <laughs> shit." And then, but now it's like when they showed up and they were like, "Hey, there's other people here." One, we didn't know about those other people, or we didn't yeah. know exactly. And you just they didn't know how to speak, and we had sicknesses. They did not have the sicknesses. Like, and I say we is I guess I don't know. I don't even know what to call myself. I'm adopted and I, I really don't know. Either way, it was a I, I shit show right. and it's about uh, celebrating what people how how brave and scary at the same time it must be to leave everything you know in in the of your you know, slice. hope of that you're going to find a better place. You don't even yeah, know that you're going maybe to Maybe not even better, a but a, a place that's your own and you don't have somebody breathing down your neck and constantly yeah. taxing you into oblivion which so i think i think funny that, how that, that mirrors itself <laughs> even more today um, yeah it's like people tried to escape you know 
things oppression. You know, it was yeah. it's a kind of oppression, and that's really what you're trying to you know focus on is the people, not necessarily every interaction that happened after that. It's expansion and you know relocating and all those things. That is a part of history in in every country. You know that kind of stuff has happened. Yeah, but, and I'll apologize for myself now for any of my historical inaccuracies. I, I'm not a historian. Me too. I don't claim to be I'm one. I occasionally pretend to be one on TV. You know what? But we're just here. That's all that Smartacular yeah. is. Is we're here. So we're don't not, get up in arms yeah. about my inaccuracies. This is just my rough overview of history that I can remember that I haven't been to school in like 20 years. So yeah, we're just we're off. just giving an outline of <laughs> of our feelings about Thanksgiving. We're yeah. not we're not trying to we're not Yale uh, professors uh, that are experts on the subject, obviously, because I couldn't even say um, monogamous. Ma- no, I, I magnanimous say, is what you're magnanimous. trying to say was magnanimous. Magnanimous. I can't even say that word. I got it mixed up with, with monogamous. Uh, monogamous. Which, yeah, in that yesterday. context, would have fit. It would have either yeah. one. I mean, I think it would so, have worked. But here, here on Smartacular, we don't always get our words. We don't always get our big fancy city words right. Our big city words get mixed up sometimes. We're not. We're not saying. We're saying we're just Smartacular. We're not saying we're intelligent. No, there's a difference for sure. Um, I was on one of those ships just while you're talking about that. When I was in England, I got a tour, a ship that was on kind of, uh, one of the oldest, and I'll I'll try to remember the name of it, but it's out of Bristol and it sailed over to America. It still did that. So you got to go on and tour it and see what the conditions were like. Now this was not the pioneer ships. This was like world-class stuff, you know, late 1700s, 1800s. This was probably leaps and bounds better than... 1400s right technology and and shit. it was grim it yeah was it's not grim. i couldn't imagine there being was, on a wooden boat for that long there was a rich people section of course and it was still fairly grim even the still rich fucking people section nasty. they had uh like a dining area out and then the rooms were off from that and then they they could go out on the deck and kind of promenade you know walk around and stuff and get fresh air lucky them but if you were below deck and you were like one you're of in the them, fiesta deck as they'd call it on a cruise ship now. Yeah, it was um, two bunks. When you'd open a door, which you could barely open, yeah, two you could bunks, barely fit. Yeah, and you could throw like a duffel bag or whatever. You Maybe know, a small and use that bag. and like sleep on it or something. Uh, yeah, and the beds just were made out of hay and some wood. You know, they were not fancy and very very small and you were with the animals like what was yeah, out where everything they, they was had mixed the dining in, room yeah. they were stalls for like horses cows like chickens like everything you were going to eat during the trip that you probably didn't get to eat as the lower class people all the grain and stuff was stored down there yeah it was it was i, I don't know how you would do that trip without getting post-traumatic stress it was awful i was like i just had to walk through you could still smell horse shit and this ship oh, I'm sure it's it's probably for... in ingrained in that wood. Like yeah, yeah, you can. It's never smell. leaving. It's never <laughs> leaving. I mean, and I, I mean, even it, you would think. I mean, you'd be like, oh, after so long, where is it? Where's the air going to go? That ship is not. It's it's pretty no. much sealed still. It's not. No, and they've refurbished it. Like they've went through and yeah. and you know fixed it up so you can tour it. it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing, and and that's why to me, the Thanksgiving holiday, which you know. What we what do we do on Thanksgiving? We eat, we watch the parade on TV sometimes, and there's usually what football. a lot of football. So yeah, it's football. a fa- it's another fa- you know if you notice there's a theme here. Now I wouldn't say that the Halloween one is really family oriented. That's one. I think that's, that's more a literal holiday. Fun. I think that's just everybody. Like it's just fun, a melee. Yeah, it's just, more of a fun thing, and you go and do your thing. Whereas the Thanksgiving and Christmas ones are more about family and togetherness and you know, being together and having that special time to, you know, make your family's dishes and have your traditions and all that stuff. Yeah, and which, when I think family, I don't necessarily, I know for a lot of people, their families are terrible. They're Mm -hmm. they're real families. When I say family, I mean what some people, I would just say your tribe or whatever you want to call them, whether it's your close friends, people you grew up with that you're still friends with Mm -hmm. today, actual family, maybe brothers and sisters, maybe you had a cool ass uncle and aunt but your parents were Mm kind of shitty but you always hung out with them like that sort of stuff i don't mean i don't always Mm -hmm. mean your exact blood family because technically i don't really have blood family because i was adopted so Mm -hmm. i mean yeah my my little brother is adopted so so we're 
you know, he is our family. You know, it's like, yeah. I, I feel like you can make, you can, whoever you're there's close the family to. you have and the family you pick or whatever that yeah. saying is. There's some nice saying about that. But the Thanksgiving one, um, what, what I've noticed is a lot of times, uh, it's the turkey, it's the stuffing, it's mashed potatoes and gravy. Um, do you guys do sweet a sweet potatoes potato dish? with the marshmallows on there? Oh. Yeah. Oh. Do you do yams or sweet potatoes? There's a there's. A uh, I've done both. Usually it was yams, but I've had both, and mm -hmm. they're great. So butter, cinnamon. I do. Yeah, yeah. We do. Um, my mom's tradition and it was from her family is we do sweet potatoes, the yellow golden kind of sweet potato. And it's layered with, it's literally just butter and brown sugar yeah. and you and layer it and then it's and kind of candied and it yeah. just, we don't do the marshmallow thing. We don't do that. See, we do the marshmallows then, um, from my parts. We do the stuffing. Um, and do you put your stuffing in the bird? And no, then on the side? it's rare that I've never seen that done at any of my families because takes longer it's to cook shitty. the bird it, it doesn't it. it's not even a good real real good way to do it you should just do it separate because there's no point in putting like it in the, the bird i think i think back top. in the day they did it one mm -hmm. probably because the ovens were so much smaller and and they mm -hmm. found it as a way to extend the meal and add like not waste any part of the bird like such as the mm -hmm. juice or so I, i'm assuming that's what it was for i don't really know hell it could have mm -hmm. been a marketing ploy for all i fucking know. i don't know I think mm -hmm. it was one of those things where it was like we had this old loaf of bread and we don't want to throw it out. Let's turn it into something for this. Oh yeah, meal I'm sure up. it was being frugality. You know? frugal. yeah, yeah, yeah. And but and we don't really have stuff. We don't. It's not stuffing for us. We call it dressing. Oh, okay. my grandma always yeah. used to make dressing. That's what it was called. But it mm -hmm. was like cornbread dressing. It wasn't mm -hmm. like white bread or whatever. It was cornbread is what it's based mm -hmm. on. And my mom makes her recipe and. I always do it. We stuff the bird, and it's in a we big. It's in a big one of those big uh, throwaway tins. Well, she. I don't know. If yeah, she still like does the it aluminum. That way, but, yeah. yeah, the aluminum thing, like yeah. a lasagna That's pan or whatever. It. It's one of those. But I think she, here in recent years she's gone to using like two separate smaller glass dishes, so that way she can. I like it because you can get that crunchy. I like the crunch on oh, top yeah. of the dressing or the stuffing. Yeah, she'll um, take it out. She'll take the cover off of it, and for like last ten or fifteen minutes, let it brown on top you have to you have to make a lot of gravy for this meal because the turkey leftovers need gravy they might be moist when you start the, the turkey might be moist but it does not stay moist for all the leftovers so you have to have a gallon about a gallon of special turkey dressing because you are excuse me turkey gravy because you need to soak everything oh see that. i'm i'm Afterwards. a big fan of i'm a dark meat person Oh, I like the dark not, meat too. Yeah, and I know a lot of people I know don't like dark meat, or mm -hmm. well, especially uh, my daughter really doesn't eat that much dark meat, and I think she gets mm -hmm. that from her, seeing her mom not eat a lot of dark meat. Mm -hmm. I'm slowly but converting it's got more her. Fat. I'm it's slowly got more converting flavor. her. I only eat chicken thighs in my house. I don't yeah. buy chicken breasts because that shit's garbage. If you think chicken yeah. breasts are better than thighs, you're stupid. I'm not even going to apologize. And they're cheaper. Uh, they're chicken thighs are cheaper they taste better you can they're more forgiving when you cook them mm -hmm. i don't I'm even need you. to get into why they're better yeah they are they taste i have it's a but better yeah factor. so there was always I like more like always made my turkey I'm, sandwiches with dark meat i didn't use sliced turkey breast because i found turkey too dry ever since yeah. i was a kid and i'd eat turkey i'm like well, i'm not even eating turkey anymore i'm just using turkey as like the cracker with the cream cheese like that's all it's for is getting other food yeah. in my mouth but yeah, with the dark I meat, I I'd put that on a sandwich it. with a little bit of mayonnaise and maybe mm -hmm. some stuffing or dressing on top of it. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Yeah. Cranberry well, I sauce. Like a hot turkey, a hot turkey sandwich is good. Like you slice yeah. it all up and then you throw the gravy over the white bread. That works. But toast but one I side just, so that it doesn't get all soggy. Not, turkey roasted turkey is just not my favorite meal at all. I just we we kind of stopped honestly. We haven't. I did. We do a turkey the last couple of years. We for a while we were doing tacos. We were doing. Yeah, we, we've done we stuff like that. I think we did meal. lasagna one year, and then yeah. I think we've oh, done we did a charcuterie board one year where we just put yeah, out a shark coochie board. <laughs> yes, a shark coochie coochie yeah, board. Yeah. Shark we uh, we've done all kind. We yeah. I think we did lasagna one year. We've done different stuff, and then one year. Oh, we deep fried a turkey a couple years. That's yeah, those are good. Deep frying a turkey, turkey if you can mm -hmm. do it without burning your house down or setting yourself yeah. on fire is far superior. <laughs> Although maybe burning your house down is an okay. Like if that happens and you still get a fried turkey out of it, then that's probably a win win. It might be a fair trade off. My my brother has deep fried the turkey before. It's pretty so good, good, but you're right. It can be dangerous. It'd be scary as shit. 
move forward with caution on the deep fried turkey. Get the correct uh, appliances to do such yes. a thing. Don't my try dad to had the big rig something. propane burner, and my yeah. f- next door neighbor let me borrow his larger turkey pot, his larger fry yeah. pot, and me and my yeah. dad used a broom to lower the turkey in. <laughs> do not, do not try to do some kind of deep fry turkey hack for this that you see on YouTube. Like follow real directions. The the best do, person do I can say ones. who gives you the person who gives the best advice for frying a turkey the safest way is Alton Brown. There we go. He, We're giving he you a shout a, out, Alton Brown. Yeah, if you're one of our tens a, of listeners, he builds a thing called a turkey derrick, which there is a big go. ladder that goes above the pot and it uses mm-hmm. pulleys and everything, so you can raise and lower it without. It. Ever yeah. being near it and it being dangerous. Also, okay. pat dry your turkey before it goes in and make sure if you get a frozen turkey, you thaw it out all the way. Because okay. if it hits any of that frozen turkey, the hot oil, it will explode. Splatter because when, everywhere. Because when water converts to steam, it expands at 1,300 times its normal size. There we go. So that's why that's it explodes when it hits. information right there. That's why we yeah. do this. That's why we do this podcast for you, you know, people out there, the tens of you who are listening. We want you to be safe when you put that turkey in your deep fryer. That's why. That's why we're here. That's it. And but, use a flavor uh, injector. And use a flavor. Or, or just watch Alton Brown do it. He'll tell you every step of the way. Yeah. Or just listen to Mass Hobo. Again, go back, rewind this, listen to that whole, but slow it down, do whatever you need to do, write down the directions. Be Be safe. Be safe out there, people. Yeah, just don't burn and your house down. That's all. Don't burn your house down during Thanksgiving. That's a very bad idea. You don't want to do that. You want to do. Holiday, you want to burn it down after the holidays. At least wait till yeah. like taxes in January. Do it like you know. anywhere between January and April fifteenth. That's when you want yeah. that thing to go up. You know, just do it then. Wait till so after next... you get your taxes back, because I think that does depend on your address. <laughs> and I'm not sure how the federal government. Will, I'm not sure if they'll get pissy if they find out your house burnt down before all that. It's possible. Uh, that could throw your taxes off. So I just wait. Summer. So, Summer's probably the best time to do it. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll give you advice. On, on accident. On accident. This. I'm just saying. Yeah. On accident. Absolutely. Don't make any of this look like... In no way do we condone arson. No. Absolutely we do not. We don't. And and that's like, as we move forward with podcasts, as we get closer um, to the holidays, we'll kind of uh, get into a few more of these subjects. But uh, it was just kind of fun to think about, uh, first of all, damn it's already here and yeah. then then we have to we breeze through october and thanksgiving those go real fast and then all of a sudden the pressure like the day after thanksgiving literally black friday happens and we oh, i are can't fucking stand black friday aware that we have to go and start we'll, we'll do christmas as a separate podcast yeah we, christmas we should is such a encompassing thing all th- thing that happens that you, the the literal yes. minute everybody's done eating for Thanksgiving. Yeah. The minute you you haven't even digested yet. And then no, you, you have are... to eat. The pros who hit the Black Friday stuff have to eat light. They don't eat. Their, yeah. They don't really eat Thanksgiving until they get home. Yeah. From standing and in line moved, for four hours. They've moved Black Friday up. It used Ev- to be earlier. Like every up fucking five year. O'clock, five o'clock in the morning. That's midnight on, on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And pretty it's soon it'll earlier. be fucking. It'll be the end of. It'll be the night of Halloween. You'd be fucking standing in line for Black Friday shit. Yeah, they'll do another one. It's it's insane, and it used to be dangerous. Like I always felt like, holy crap! I went I one time with my ex wife before we got divorced. I went. We she was like, "Let's go," and I was like, "All right, we'll go." I as <laughs> I just generally hate shopping because I hate going into a store and standing around and looking at random shit for like two hours and not either not buying anything or looking at the same thing six times and still not buying it. And yeah, well, exactly. I'm not looking. I'm just standing there, like as somebody with ADHD. That's fucking maddening for me. Like I'm just like, fuck. I'd rather do anything right now, like anything. Yeah, it's uh, not. It's not. And great. so I, I don't. I mean, like we stood on. We got a deal. The only thing we got was a deal on some fucking uh, luggage. That was it. And I had to stand in line for like 45 minutes for that. That's shit. not worth it. No, and see, that's the no, thing is, by not. the time you know your time is worth something, your time is valuable, and even to get something for twenty five percent off or whatever, even the deals aren't that great sometimes. Because they jack the, the fucking time, price up right before they put the fucking deal on it. So yeah, by the time you've spent that time, did you really get that good of a deal? And then people are like mean and they're aggressive and like there's they're been cunts, people that have man. Died they're cunts about that, it. 
died in stampedes for a fucking TVs at Walmart. Like, here's one place I don't want to die. I don't want to fucking die at Walmart. If I'm going to die at Walmart, it's going to be in the post-apocalypse, and it's going to be killing somebody over a can of nacho cheese or something. (laughs) Well, make it something good, like nacho cheese. If you're Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to die over a TV. Look, I'll get another TV. I'm going to be starving to death. I'm going to need It's going to be a can of Rico's. It's got to be Rico's, too. If it's any other can, I'm not going to kill somebody over that. Well, that's why people... Right. That's you only kill people over quality can juice. Yeah. That's yeah. a given. Yeah. But I I don't want to go uh, to Walmart. First of all, I, I try not to be there ever. And if I on the off chances on the times when I've had to go for some reason, I've immediately felt like I wanted to poke both my eyeballs out that like yeah. five minutes. Why do they do they put it's an atmosphere it's got its own atmosphere are they actors that how do i don't know anybody when i'm out in any other part of the world in where i live i never see those people that are dressed they don't have a people of kmart or a people of target.com okay it's a people of walmart yeah that's a whole thing go anywhere else right they're they're not it's just it's just the weird shit you see at walmart i've never seen like that kind of weird shit at any other i guess you call it a big box store essentially yeah. what they are yeah so no i haven't either and i'm like where are where do you come from and where do you lead are you always here i think they're hired i think they're right. hired actors and they give them a weird outfit to put on and they just hang out there and then they get into their normal clothes and go have real life because i don't understand so the minute i go in i'm immediately uncomfortable because you don't know what's coming around the corner you don't know right. what you're going to see that you're going to have to act like is not a big deal like yeah. you have to school your face into a mask of neutrality. So you're like, I can't look shocked when the person with the hot pink thong, when the guy, when the man with the, the hot yeah, the pink guy in the thong, hot pink thong. Yeah, with wearing his low two different jeans. color Crocs. Yeah, two different color Crocs. And a ponytail. And a, like a, and a flannel shirt and a man yeah. bun. Yeah. yeah. And then it's like Nothing against any of those things individually, but when you put that all into one look, it's not a you good look. You like look like you hit the random button on a game of Sims. <laughs> and you just, then you had to go out in public in it. Yeah. And, and yeah, so that's like, what, and, the, and how some of the women, like, I'm a plus size lady and I'll wear some, you know, I'll wear some low cut stuff. I'm, and I'm not opposed. I just made a gesture when I did that, by the way. Just imagine yeah. me making a gesture of low cut clothes. And, um, and you know, that's fine, but this goes beyond that. This is, uh, some, and, and you don't want to body shame. You don't want to make people feel like, you know, they're out there trying to do their body acceptance and stuff. And I'm, I'm totally supportive of that, but here's something to anyone, no matter what your size is, I don't care if you're a zero or a size 30, do not wear flesh tone colored pants. pants. Especially do leggings. Not wear, do not wear le- leggings. Flesh tone colored leggings. No one. It's weird. No one. Why would you do that? It looks. Why do they make those? On everyone. I don't know. I feel like it's a social experiment. They're fucking with us. That's what it is. It is unacceptable. On any. I never wear my flesh colored leggings anywhere but around the house. <laughs> Please don't ever wear them during this podcast. I can see you, and you can see me. Like. Our tens of people listening, they cannot see us. We both look really nice right now. I think we both look great. <laughs> I'm just going to say that whether we look good Bummer or not. never left my house from what I'm wearing. <laughs> but, well, listen, it is, it's time for the official end of our second. I know we're not going to have a real smooth segue, and it's not going to, you know, probably, it's just going to be kind of abrupt. But, listen, remember, our tagline is that we're here. We're just, we're yep. here. And that's, we're not going to pretend we're something we're not. We're, we're not some big fancy, big city, fancified, four people are editing the podcast and this is like going through a big process and it's going through a studio. We're not like Jon Stewart doing a podcast. We're like us doing a podcast. Yeah. So, so we're going to have an abrupt ending and we're going to wish you well as you prepare to go into the holidays and we'll have a special Christmas episode. We will yeah, we'll have to definitely do something for have Christmas. that. I have some I have some Christmas recipes I want to share, so we'll definitely do that. And I'm sure you have a touching, lovely Christmas story to a, tell. I do have a good well. I don't know how good it is. It's mm-hmm. it's funny. 
and it involves mm-hmm. my daughter when she was a little kid. Perfect. So. I have a couple it's a, of those It's a classic, like, it's a classic man. Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll do, we'll have to get into that. And then we can get yeah. into how we're going to prepare for the new year, which is probably in full battle gear. We'll see. But new year, listen, new me. <laughs> new year, new me. So listen, thank you guys. Thank you to the tens of you that uh, maybe we have six people now. Who knows? That are That's listening. Cool. Yeah, we're fine. We're, if you're three of you, if there's 300 of you, we don't care. If we ever get up here. to 69, we can't get any more, though, because nice. Yeah, you're going to stay right at that number. That's a good, good, solid number to end on. So you guys have a great day, and we will talk to you soon. Thanks for Y'all joining Y'all have a good us. one. Yeah, we'll see you later. <laughs>